When wanting to climb in League of Legends, putting tons of hours in one champion can actually reap your rewards. Unfortunately though, in World of Warcraft, unless your spec is strong, this isn't really the case, and you're forced to either suck it up or re-roll. So have you ever won a gladiator but feel like it's quite possibly the difficulty of your spec or even just the strength of your class that's holding you back? Well, let's address that problem. As today, we're going to be covering the easiest specs to play this season for each role if you want to reach gladiator level ratings. And do you know what else will almost certainly improve your rating? Skill capped, of course. Our videos over on our website are designed by pro players and are proven to increase not only your skill but also knowledge in PvP. In fact, over half a million players just like you have used our service and have seen lasting rating gains. We are so confident in your success that we offer a money back guarantee if you don't see the results you are expecting. And with prices as low as $4.99 a month, you have absolutely nothing to lose. So don't miss out. Join today and become part of the best PvP learning experience of all time. Starting off with melee options, our first recommendation is Retribution Paladin. Retribution is a spec in which its strength rapidly declines the higher rating you get, but that decline only really happens at the peak of rating. Anywhere from Challenger all the way up to Gladiator level of ratings, Ret is a complete wrecking ball. There isn't really anything that comes close to the burst you're capable of doing during your Avenging Wrath, and due to this, it can cause enemies to either not respect your cooldowns or just panic and overuse defensives. What makes Ret especially strong is their instant one-shot potential. Sure, players at all ratings know to look out for Avenging Wrath, but even then, by the time they see it, they can often be dead. The main reason for this is that Avenging Wrath is not on the global cooldown, so you can prepare Seraphim, then hit Avenging Wrath and Divine Toll at the same time, and take enemies 100 to 0 instantly before they can even react. Is this hard to do? No, of course not, and the only real counter is how your enemies play and react to this, so no matter if you're a rank 1 ret or you've just picked up the spec for the first time, literally anybody can do this and have success. Another big problem which players encounter, and what keeps them from pushing higher, is managing to play their spec correctly defensively. Retribution is very easy in this regard, as against most melee, you're quite durable and have easy to use defensives. Are you low and about to die? Pop your divine shield and be immune to damage. Are you about to take high damage? Then pop your shield of vengeance. And then you can look to maintain your own and your teammates' health with your incredibly strong word of glories. The only real difficulty involved with retribution is how you use your team utility, but even then it's easy to pick up and learn. You have sanctuary to keep your team out of stuns or silences, blessing or protection to save allies, and sacrifice to reduce some damage output. But if you want a melee spec to cruise to Gladiator on, it doesn't really get much better than retribution. Strong, high burst, defensively sound, and especially easy to pick up. Our alternative melee is a spec with a slight rise in difficulty, but also strength, Arms Warrior. Arms Warrior currently is the poster boy for all melee specs, it literally does it all. High consistent damage, high burst damage, team utility, mobility, defensively strong, yeah, we could keep going here. Anyway, we'll keep mentioning this throughout this guide, but it's something a lot of players struggle with, and that's using their defensives correctly and their ability to survive. Warrior does this almost passively. Your job is a simple one. Are they on me? Press defensive stance. Are they not? Then go battle stance. You're rarely going to ever be in a situation where your lack of awareness or game knowledge will cause you to get one shot and die, as you are just so naturally durable. As a result, this gives you a lot more time to consider your options and use defensives accordingly. Unlike other melee, for example, Rogue and Monk, they're reliant on kiting and avoiding a lot of damage to survive. This isn't something you're going to have to worry about too much on Warrior, and even Retribution, you can stay on target and just focus on damage for the most part. Arms Warrior is also undeniably strong at all rating levels, being the most represented melee in every arena bracket with a multitude of different composition options, meaning you're not going to spend all day in LFG trying to find that one perfect composition. You can just pick up your buddies from LFG, call a target in the starting room, and just unload your easy to pick up damage rotation. There isn't really any worrying about setups or coordinating your damage, crowd control, and burst with your teammates in order to set up kills. It's just your job just to maximize pressure, which is very easy to do. What does and will make you stand out as a warrior and cause the skill ceiling to rise is how you use your team utility. Tools like Rallying Cry, Intervene, and War Banner. But even then, the skill floor is so low that even with suboptimal usage of these abilities while you learn to maximize them, you're still going to be incredibly strong and contribute a ton to your team, making warriors one of the easiest melee to play for Gladiator in patch 9.1. All right, then next up, we're moving on to our range specs. Our next spec is without a doubt the easiest spec to get Gladiator with in patch 9.1 for any role at all. Beast Mastery Hunter. 
Now, you've probably heard Beast Mastery is easy to play before. I mean, it's no secret. But what makes it so easy? Well, most specs in WoW have quite a complex damage rotation, or at least some nuances tied into it. Beast Mastery, on the other hand, almost exclusively uses only two buttons, Cobra Shot and Barb Shot. Yeah, there is of course kill shot procs and maintaining your flayed shot, but having a damage rotation being this simple allows you to never have to worry or think about it. Arena is all about micromanaging, and there is always so much going on it can often be overwhelming. You have to focus on your crowd control, defensives, positioning, damage, and even more. Well, focusing on damage isn't something you ever have to worry about. Neither are your offensive cooldowns. In fact, most top beast mastery hunters simply pop their offensive cooldowns on cooldown. Not to mention everything that you do as a BM hunter is instant, meaning you can just run around and lose nothing from it. You don't have to stand to cast like most other ranged specs, so this is again another aspect of arena you're not having to worry about that pretty much every other ranged spec deals with. Just because something is easy to play doesn't necessarily mean it's strong though, does it? Well, in the case of Beast Mastery, honestly, Yes, it really does. Spam your easy to deal damage on your chosen target, and then the only real difficulty is tied to securing your instant crowd control from freezing traps. But learning to do this with your intimidation stun and even help from your team can make even this a non-issue. Overall, if you want an easy ride to Gladiator, Beast Mastery is a fantastic option. Just get yourself a Feral and a Priest and you're going to have the odds stacked in your favor. The other ranged spec joining Beastmaster as one of the easiest ranged specs to get Gladiator on may come as a surprise, but it's Balanced Druid. But what about Fire Mages and Shadow Priests? Well, hear us out here. Balanced Druids are inherently one of the most durable ranged specs in the game, meaning you don't have to manage your defensive cooldowns or even team utility like a Shadow Priest otherwise would. Then, if you look at the offensive side of things, Fire Mages require actual setups to be effective at all, and with teams being able to interrupt you and prevent that from happening, it can be difficult to play. Balanced Druids, on the other hand, have the best of both worlds. Defensively, you can for the most part tank damage, then offensively, your setups are almost guaranteed with Solar Beam Mass Entanglement. A lot of the difficulty in Balanced Druid in previous seasons was tied to securing Cyclones and popping cooldowns at the correct time. Well, now with the addition of Alkin Frenzy, now affecting Cyclone, you can secure Cyclones a lot easier. Then your damage is all on a one minute timer. Get some Astral Power, pop Fury of Elun, Use your Kyrian Empowerment and unload instant unavoidable damage onto your target, all with an instant root beam onto the enemy healer. The newly added Kindred Affinity Legendary is also one of the main reasons we're seeing the uprise of Balanced Druids, specifically when paired with a Necrolord partner like Windwalker Monk or Elemental Shaman, as you provide both you and your ally with 8% permanent versatility, which rises to 16% every time you use your empowerment, making you both a lot more durable and burst all that much harder. Outside of cycloning, there isn't really that much you have to worry about. Your consistent damage is very easy to achieve, you don't have any team utility, and you're very strong strong defensively. But overall, with just how consistent and easy to achieve your setups are, it all makes Balanced Druid both strong and very easy to play up to Gladiator level ratings. Let's finish things off by covering healer specs. Restoration Druids are our first pick. We recently placed them S plus in our healer tier list and for very good reason. Restoration Druids are not only the strongest healer in the game right now, but also very surprisingly one of the easiest to play. The first reason for this is their healing output. If you hate seeing health bars low and not having the healing capacity to top them up to full, then Restoration Druids is for you. No other healer in the game is capable of this much healing. And as almost all of it is instant and doesn't require you to cast, it's very easy to keep your team alive, as dealing with interrupts is one of the major pain points for healers. If you know what a Restoration Druid's toolkit consists of, you'd probably be surprised in hearing that in 3v3, they're one of the most passive healers to play. They're essentially this season's heal bots. You can sit at pillars, play defensively, and just spam instant healing over time effects to keep your team alive in a lot of the meta compositions. Something else you have in abundance is very short cooldown recovery tools. There's no worse feeling than your teammate dropping low and you having no answer but to hard cast heals in order to recover. Well, Restoration Druid has Overgrowth, Nature's Swiftness, and even Iron Bark, all again instant with very low cooldowns to help with this. Another reason we recommend Restoration Druid is that they, unlike most healers, are less punished by poor positioning, and when you are mispositioned, you have the most mobility out of any of the other healers, allowing you to easily reposition when required. And then when being focused, which is another pain point most healers struggle with, Restoration Druid has again all instant healing over time effects, but with tools like Bear Form for the increased armor, and even Frenzied Regeneration which allow you a very easy time at surviving. 
The second and final healer making this list is going to be Restoration Shaman. If you prefer the more hands-on approach, this is definitely it. Restoration Shaman has a lot of the same tools that make Restoration Druid easy, so you've got all your healing being instant with Riptide, Healing Tide Totem, Healing Stream, Unleash Life, and even your Covenant ability Primordial Wave, so you're rarely required to cast or deal with interrupts. You're also not easy to punish when mispositioned, as you have tools like Grounding Totem or Wind Shear in order to stop crowd control, and even have the increased speed and immunity to slows from Ghost Wolf to reposition. And then when you end up in sticky situations, you, much like Restoration Druid, have a lot of tools to recover, like Spirit Link Totem and Ascendant. What helps Restoration Shaman's case is the compositions it's favored in. Shaman fits very nicely into cleaves, more specifically Rushdown cleaves, primarily thanks to the Deep Tremor Stone Legendary. So in most situations when playing meta compositions, you're looking to go into games and play super aggressive, acting almost like this support damage healer crossover than just your standard generic healer. Throwing out instant heals when needed, using your cooldowns to recover, but then just purging kill targets, assisting with damage, or even stopping heals and crowd control with your interrupts. Overall though, thanks primarily to its cleave composition options, Restoration Shaman is our second easiest to play recommendation for healers. All right then guys, that's going to be the conclusion of our easiest to play classes to achieve gladiator for each role. On screen now, you'll see a quick recap of our finalized recommendations. So let us know what you think in the comments. Do you agree? And if not, what would you change? We here at Skillcap love hearing your opinion, so be sure to drop a comment. And while you're down there, be sure to like this video. And if you want to see more videos just like this one, be sure to hit that subscribe button and ring that bell to be notified whenever we release new up-to-date content. Also, if you're wondering about composition options, be sure to check out our easiest compositions to glad video coming out in the next few days. For now though, thanks for watching, good luck on your season goals, and we will see you in the next video.